Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the 7th tutorial of the series Special Effects for Games. I'm using Unity 5.5 and since a lot of people requested to do some cartoon 2D effects, today we are going to see how to do it by creating these cartoonish flames. There are two distinct cartoon styles and I'm talking about these two flames. The first one is made with the help of Photoshop and the other one is made with the After Effects. And today we are going to see how to make this first effect in Photoshop. And the effects are done in 3D, but they also work for 2D games. You only need to decrease the maximum particles and you can work in only two axes if you want. That's the main difference, guys. You can find more tutorials of special effects in my channel and you can have access to all of them if you support me in my Patreon page. So let's see how we can do this. As a good practice, we can start by creating an empty game object and rename it to Particle System Cartoon Flames. We also need to create a folder with the same name. Let's add a new Particle System, rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X axis so it faces up and rename it to Flame01. I used this image as you can see for the first Cartoon Flames that I created but I'm going to show you how I came up with this. Let's open up Photoshop or your image editing software and create a file with 2000 by 2000. We can paint the background to black and I'll create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N. Now the idea is that you search for a brush or you even create one like I did for the first Cartoon Flames and then we are going to create three or four shapes like these ones. So you can see that we have one bigger, one is rounder, the other is pointy, like a triangle shape, and the other looks like a C shape. After we have created that, what we can do is use the C key to crop what we want to export. And be sure to uncheck delete cropped pixels. Otherwise, when you crop, you will delete what is outside of the crop area. After you have selected what you want to export, you can hide the black background and export as a PNG. Now we can do this for the other shapes that we have drawn and export to Unity. And as you can see this brush that I have selected, it looks cloudy. This will give a different effect from the first particle system that I have created. So it is important to choose our brush carefully. Or you can also do the shapes with the pen tool which, by the way, we will use in the next tutorials for After Effects. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and focus on this. After we have imported to Unity, like this, we need to create a new material and rename it to Flame01. Now we go to Shader and select Particles Additive. I'm gonna select one of these images and drop to the slot of the material. And now I'm gonna drop the material to the Flame01. As you can see this immediately takes effect, but we need to make a few changes. Ok, so the duration is going to be 5. For this effect it doesn't really matter a lot, so it's going to be looping. Now let's change the start size to random between 0.1 and 2. And change the start speed to 1 and 2.5, between 1 and 2.5. This way there will be some particles that are going to be slower and the others going to be a little bit faster. Now we can control how much time they are going to leave by setting the a random number to the start lifetime between 1 and 2.5. Ok, so let's increase the rate over time in the emission to 100 so we can have more particles. And I'm gonna change the radius to 0.35 with a cone shape. And now let's turn on color over lifetime. And as you can see, I already have these gradients, but it's really easy to create one. The keys on top control the opacity and you can add one with the left click mouse. And the keys on the bottom controls the color, as you can see. And the idea is that you create a gradient that makes the flames hotter in the beginning and they end with a yellowish color at the end. Something more or less like this. And also make sure that the start and the end have some opacity, especially in the hands, since we want to see the particles fading. And now we can give a warm color by changing the start color to render between two colors. And we are going to select the yellow 
for the first one and a reddish color for the last one. And we also have to decrease the opacity. Ok, so after you have set the colors of your flames, we need to turn on size over lifetime. And this is what is going to control the start and the end size of each particle. And we want them to grow quickly. By the way, you can add a key with the right click mouse. So we want them to grow quickly in the beginning and we want them to maintain that size until they reach half of the lifetime and then they are going to decrease to a smaller particle until they disappear. Now I'm going to change the start rotation since we want each particle to start with a random rotation between 0 and 360 degrees and we also want to give some rotation over lifetime to each particle. I'm going to set a small value like 15, it's a small rotation over lifetime. Now let's go to the render and increase the max particle size to 3, because if we get closer to the flames they will shrink probably. Now let's go ahead and turn on lights and this feature is only available from Unity 5.5 and the idea is that we create a point light and you can decrease the range to 4 or something smaller. The color of the light doesn't really matter because we can give the same color as the particle. You can save the light as a prefab if you want, I think it's useful. And then you can drag that prefab to this input for light and we increase the rate to 1 which means that every particle is born it's going to have a light but we can control the maximum light down here and I'm gonna set a value around 6 and 8. Let's create a random range for the range multiplier which means that some lights will have a minimum of 0.8 and a maximum of 2. And as you can see now if you turn off use particle color it's going to have the white color that the light has. Now the intensity multiplier we also want some random numbers and values between 0 0.4 and 1 are good in my opinion, at least for this particle system. And this is pretty much done for the flame 01. Now we can duplicate the flame 01 and rename it to flame 02. Now I'm gonna create another material and now I'm gonna drag the flame 04 to the flame 02 particle system which will give this look and we want this flame 02 to give some more details to the main flames and we are going to decrease the start size to random between 0 0.01 and 1 and we are going to increase the radius we also want to increase the start lifetime so some particles live longer than the main flames like this as you can see we can also decrease the opacity and we need to turn off lights we don't need for these particles and this is done for this flame 02 you can make a few adjustments if you want we can duplicate again the flame 02 and rename it to smoke I'm gonna create a new material and call it smoke because this time we need to change the shader to alpha blend. Now you can drag one of the textures that you have drawn to the slot material and drag the smoke material to the smoke particle system. And we selected alpha blended so we can make the smoke black. Now the idea is that this only has one color which is white and with an opacity level more or less like this. And now in color over lifetime is where we are going to make the smoke black. And the idea is that you create a gradient more or less like this one. And what I did was cut off the beginning yellow and orange colors that you can see with this top key. And basically we only need the dark red and the black colors. Now for the smoke we also need to increase the start size to random between 2 and 4, something like this. And we also want to increase the start lifetime, the maximum to 4. And the start speed, we can decrease it a little bit to around 2 or something similar. We are also going to increase the rate over time to 100 particles per second, like this. And now the last trick for the smoke is that we push in the y-axis a little bit up like this 
And now, as you may notice, sometimes the black smoke is in front of the flames and sometimes it's behind the flames. And that's because we need to go to the material, the last option. And if you increase this to 3001, you can see that now the smoke is always in front of the flames. So the idea is that we decrease this to at least 2900, like this. And now it's always going to be rendered behind the flames, which is what we want. And now as you can see it gives this nice blend between the dark smoke and the flames. And the last thing we need to do to the smoke is increase the start delay. Because if you press play now, you are going to see the flames and smoke starting at the same time. And we don't want that. We want to increase the smoke start delay to around 0 0.5. So it gives this nice that the flame started first and then the smoke comes second. Okay, that's good. And this is done for the smoke. And now we can give a few more details to our flames by creating a new particle system and this particle system is going to only emit particles. And let's rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X axis, so it faces up. Now what we want is to make the start lifetime random, and it's going to be random between 0 0.7 and 4. We also want to make the start size random between 0 0.01 and 0 0.4, which will make sure that there is very small particles and then a few ones bigger. Now let's increase the angle of our shape and the radius has to be a little bit bigger than the rest of the flames and the smoke, like this. We can also increase the rate over time, between 40 particles and 60 particles per second are good. I'm gonna limit the max particles to 150 particles, like this. And now we can give a little bit of randomness by turning on velocity over lifetime. And we can set random between two constants for the x, y and z axis, which will allow us to insert a minimum and a maximum. And I'm going to use 2 and minus 2, like this. And now you can see that they move a little bit differently. And I'm going to set a value of 0.1 for the gravity modifier, but I'm going to change it in a few moments. Now let's turn on color over lifetime and for this we want a warm color and we want the beginning and the end to be transparent like this and we can turn on size over lifetime and use a curve similar to this one which will make the particles shrink toward the ends of their lifetime. And now as you can see if I increase the gravity modifier to 0.3 and set the velocity over lifetime of the z to minus 3 it will make the particles fall in the ground and we can turn on collision and set the collision to world we can also set the bounce value to 0 0.3 and now as you can see the particles start colliding with the ground and if there was other 3d objects the particles would also collide now let's go to renderer and we want to change the render mode to stretch at billboard which will stretch the particles and will allow us to increase the speed scale to 0 0.2 or 0 0.07 and they will look like sparks, like little sparks. We can also decrease the start size if you think it's too big. And we can also make the start speed random between two numbers. Now if we set the maximum of the z in the velocity over lifetime to 4, you can see that some particles will fall in the ground and the other ones will fly. And that's because we have a random start speed between 1 and 3 and the gravity modifier of 0 0.3. You can play with these values and see what you like, what fits best for your vision. What we also can do is turn on trails. And now as you can see this is pink, this has a pink color because we need a material. And we can actually use one of the flames that we have created. And now you can see that we have a lot of trails. Some of you may like it, but if you want less trails, you can go to the ratio. And you can see that you only want a third of all the particles to have trails. You can also make the lifetime render between half of the lifetime of the particle and one. You can also make the trail a little bit transparent, like this. And this is pretty much all you need to know for the particles. I'm gonna rename it to particles. I'm gonna drag it on top of the flame 01 so we can see everything working together. And I think it's looking very good actually. 
And if I play this, you can see actually that we have two different styles. That's what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. The brush is very important to give a cartoonish style. This one that I've created with that brush give it a more realistic feeling. But the first one that I created off camera, it was made with a different brush, with a brush with less noise. And I think the end result is a little bit more cartoonish. So yes, the brush is really important if you want to make cartoon style effects with Photoshop. And that's basically it guys. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction tutorial to cartoon styles. There will be a few more. I really hope that you support me in my Patreon, it will be very very useful. And see you in the next tutorials guys, subscribe for weekly game development tutorials and thank you for watching.